I'm just saying, sorry. <laughs> uh, but I would read um, some very, very more personal, again, poems, again. Um, please enjoy. Also, interesting thing I want to try out is that when I'm done with my poem, I would be doing this. <laughs> and so, yeah, okay? The first one I call it Scars. By the time you hear this, I'm already too late. You've developed scars that shouldn't have happened without you knowing. This world doesn't deserve you. This world does not deserve you. You spoke of happiness and lies, vulnerability and sincerity, milk and honey, and yet they never, never care. <coughs> they will never care. I'm not even sure it's in their nature to. They broke your happiness, they twisted you with lies, they cut you with your insecurities and filled you with self-hate. And it's easier said than done. You want to remain humble. You want to stay true to your heart. But because of them, can you truly feel again? Can you truly love again? Can you truly be you? The first time I met my abuser was in a car with a friend. We happened to meet each other and was told that we were related. So I cared for them <coughs> from day one. I thought that we could be friends. So I sat with them, told them many things, and yet they pushed me aside. So I sat alone, blinded by where they take by where they would take me blinded by the world happening around me because they restricted me, held me, hurt me, all because they wanted to control me. They used big fancy words to hide themselves. They elevated themselves so they could do no wrong. So when I finally broke myself, freed myself from their twisted, toxic lies, when I told them to stop, they knew that I found my voice my purpose, myself, and so they felt threatened. Brought in all of their already sick, twisted friends to come jab at me. They say I have such a big ego. <laughs> such a big ego. And it's so funny because they actually would go back to their little clips and talk so much shit about me. And you know what? Go on, coward. One who speaks about Hmong Ruju Hu Hmong, but they hate their own Hmong people here. Go on, coward, back to this clique of yours, as you decide to spread lies on me, on Facebook, or through your friends, or through other people. Go on, coward, run like the wind, to the only place you know how to be, your interpersonal privileged area. One who could lie so much, one who, who could hurt so much, one who could be so damn heartbreaking. I hope you leave. Leave with your boys. Leave with the girls you kick it with. The door is right there. Can't leave? Good. Listen. Stay. Let this be your last straw to hurt me. Let this be your final warning. Let this be the, time, the last time that I actually cared for you. I hope you're not starving yourself. I hope you still see yourself as beautiful. Because even if you're, even, because not even your own toxic friends wants to be with you. And after all of this, I hope you're safe. Because unlike you, I learned to actually care. In a, um, reactional response, I guess, when people keep coming to me and say, trans women are trans women and not <coughs> women. If I hear another woman tell me what it means to be a 
woman. And they keep bringing up this interesting concept that I have this male privilege diaries. And so I thought it'd be nice to tell them about my male privilege I had growing up. Being told that I shouldn't be around children because I'd confuse them being called an entity, a mentally ill man in a dress when I actually did transition, rejected by practically everybody at every institution, rejected um, being socialized to know that there wasn't a place for me in a capitalist society that didn't involve me being sexually exploited, being called a thing and using the pronouns of it. Crippling fear of being outed, ridiculed by friends, family, and strangers, being harassed, stalked, and raped, having to do the impossible by fitting in the patriarchal standards of both masculinity and femininity at the same time, being told to kill myself for being a sissy, faggot, little bitch, having to having the shit be out of me for being a faggot who could who could never change in the boys' locker room being correctively raped and then told I must enjoy it, taking twice as long to go through the airport security because of a groin anatomy, being asked, are your boobs real? Every time a man has hit on me, question my gender, then come back on hitting on me, but no more threatening time, being abused as a child for expressing femininity, being seen as a failure to be a woman or a man, but also not allowed to be neither, constantly failing this thing called gender. My hair remains the site of war for my own womanhood, but for other women, short hair and body are a sign of existence. Getting shoved into a locker and called slurs by other boys, knowing not to trust men in groups and have these long ass legs running the opposite direction, being looked up and down with a raised eyebrow throughout 80% of my interactions with strangers. Having violence against women and queer folks excuse, and excuses of he's just a man. When I know I will always be there for all women, no matter what, but women will never be there for me. When nobody in the gay world wanted to date me because I was too femme. That time in high school, I was routinely called an albino sissy faggot. That hoping for death was considered a normal thing. Whenever I sang, I could never sing the woman's part because my voice was considered too low. Always constantly being in fear, just in case my parents saw me for who I actually am. Being yelled at for not being a woman because I don't have makeup on. Being yelled at for being a woman for having makeup on. Being policed to not say the word bitch because it's not in my own place to use it. Being called disproportionate after getting surgeries. Being called a lady boy and be expected to be happy about it. Where all I will ever be seen is either in porn or a National Geographic show. Knowing that the difference between me and a black trans girl is that I get raped and that they, and they get killed. Constantly being invalidated by cis women saying, when they say what I say, but when they say it, they get applauded for it. The time a queer person, a queer person told me to just come out to my family as if it was so simple to do so. And so do you want to hear more? No, that's the thing, I'm not male, and I'll never be male. Where is this male privilege, you fucking turf? Thank you.